boy, the Scream 7 rumors do be rumbling. This past weekend, we may have gotten confirmation on what the type of setting will be for Scream 7, on top of a very interesting dinner that happened between Radio Silence and some other fellow horror friends that may just give confirmation on who our mysterious fourth writer could be for this film. We have a lot of fun rumors to explore in this video, so let's just get right on into them. Well, sometimes, that is better. Now, before I get into any more of this video, I do just want to say that a lot of this is going to be speculation and rumors, so do not take this as absolute fact. Take it instead with a grain of salt. So first thing I want to talk about is over this past weekend, we received a brand new picture of Radio Silence having dinner with Christopher Landon and none other than Michael Kennedy, the screenwriter for Freaky, a film from 2020 that if you have not seen and you're a Scream fan, holy shit, stop what you're doing right now and watch that damn film. It is so Scream inspired, but at the same time, it is Freaky Friday meets Friday the 13th, as the original title would suggest, Freaky Friday the 13th. See what they did there? Another rumor I reported on a little while ago is that apparently Scream 7 has four writers. My assumption right now is that they'll bring back Guy and Jamie from the previous two films because those movies were successful, so why wouldn't they bring them back? And then Christopher Landon stated in an interview recently that he always has a hand in the writing for the films he directs. So my assumption right now is three confirmed writers. Who is this mysterious fourth person? Well, it could be Mike. Michael Kennedy. Now, I've seen a lot of fans doubt this and say some negative things about Michael Kennedy's work, like Freaky, for instance, is a little too gimmicky. The man also has a new movie coming out later this year called It's a Wonderful Knife, which is being described as Scream meets It's a Wonderful Life. Written by Michael Kennedy and directed by Tyler McIntyre from Tragedy Girls, It's a Wonderful Knife is an upcoming Christmas slasher set in idyllic Angel Falls. A year after saving her town from a psychotic killer on Christmas Eve, Winnie Carruthers' life is less than wonderful. But when she wishes she'd never been born, she finds herself in a nightmare parallel universe and discovers that without her, things could be much, much worse. Now the killer is back and she must team up with the town misfit to identify the killer and get back to her own reality. I will say, I think that Freaky in particular does borrow just a little too much from some of the other movies it's clearly inspired by. Like the inciting incident in that film is the exact same from Freaky Friday. But it's got a different enough tone and certain things going on that I'm okay with it, especially because it's a goofier comedy focused movie. Like, it's not Halloween Ends that is directly ripping off Christine beat for beat for beat the whole time. That, to me, is different. If Halloween Ends was a farce, I would probably really enjoy it, but it's not, and that was not the intention at all of that film. It's a Wonderful Knife seems to be the same situation, but do we want that tone for Scream 7? Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't want it to become a parody of itself. That's scary movie, and that already exists. I really appreciate how these later Scream films have cranked up the horror element a little bit. It almost feels lacking in some of the Scream sequels, especially 2 and 3, but 4, 5, and 6 are unarguably horror movies, where 3 is almost just a comedy. They cannot lose that in entry number 7, in my opinion. You gotta be able to make this one scary, or it's not gonna work. But I do like a lot of Michael Kennedy's writing, despite the worries I have for him possibly being involved with Scream 7. You gotta have a little goofy goofiness here and there. Come on. Just not the whole time. It's a Wonderful Knife comes out on November 10th. If you guys want me to make a big video about it, leave me something about it in the comments of this video. Getting into the second part of this update, YouTuber and friend of the channel, Critical Overlord, reports that some of his sources have told him that Scream 7 will have a holiday setting, potentially a Christmas New York setting. Now, I have talked so much on this page about how I would love to see Ghostface in the snow if this does actually end up getting confirmed. Once again, third-party sources, we can't be 100% sure at this very date and moment, but if this is 100% true, I would absolutely love it. I would be so down for Ghostface in the snow, maybe killing people with Christmas ornaments, smashing them in the fucking head. You know, a bunch of glass pieces sticking out of their forehead. That could be fun. But once again, just don't get too gimmicky with it. Scream 6 did a really good job, in my opinion, of not getting too gimmicky with the New York setting. A lot of people complained about this, but personally, this is something I praise. If Scream 6 would have been like this weird tourist movie where we're going to hot spots in New York, like the Statue of Liberty, the Empire State Building, Times Square, that would have been so gimmicky and dumb. I'm so happy that we didn't do that and we just made it a big city horror movie. I see so many people complaining about that, but the opposite would have been way worse and way more of a gimmick. Ghostface throwing a character off of the Statue of Liberty sounds like something you'd see in the SNL parody of this movie. If you ask me, that would have sucked some big old hairy testicles. But New York in the snow is a wildly different animal. Now, me myself, I've only ever driven through the big city, but I do know that traversing that city without snow is already difficult. Add in a snowstorm so it takes you even longer to get from point A to point B. On top of all of that, imagine 
imagine a masked serial killer trying to come after you all at the same time. Now, with all of this being said, with Michael Kennedy potentially writing this new film, don't make the Christmas New York setting too gimmicky if we end up going there. I really don't want to see our main characters in Times Square celebrating the ball dropping for the new year. That would be ridiculous. Why would we be doing that when Ghostface is on the loose killing people? They would be holed up in their apartment somewhere. If you want to cut to that on the TV or something, it's like, oh, this is happening in Times Square right now. Okay, fine, sure, whatever, but don't have our characters go there. The other thing about all of this too is that the majority of our characters that we'll be following in Scream 7, presumably the core four, maybe Gail Weathers, they're not going to be doing tourist activities like going to the ball for New Year's Eve. They know how much of a hell that is to get out of. I haven't been myself, but I have heard horror stories about people who get trapped in New York because they can't get a cab out into New Jersey. That sounds terrifying. I feel like these characters would avoid mistakes like that because they've been in the city a lot longer. They have way more experience than just the average Joe like myself who has only ever driven through New York City and lives in but nowhere Ohio. There's no traffic here, but there's also nothing to do. <laughs> the holiday element could also be a great tool to get Sydney Prescott and her husband, Mark Kincaid, to New York City to visit everybody for the holidays. After watching Saw X, I have a lot more faith in the legacy character storyline for Scream 7, but it needs to be good, bottom line. If we want to integrate the Sydney Prescott storyline back into Scream 7, I think the best way to do it is cut out the opening scene entirely. Now hear me out. No ghost face opening scene. We immediately start with Sydney Prescott living with her husband and her kids, of course. Maybe she gets a babysitter. She flies all the way out to New York. We get a scene with her visiting Gail. Maybe the rest of the core four is there, whatever. And then Ghostface strikes. This Ghostface would have to know that Sydney Prescott would never just leave her kids at home with a babysitter if there was a Ghostface killer out there, obviously. Sydney gets in New York and then bam, Ghostface strikes. One of the core four members die or something. I don't know. One of the legacy characters has to go. On top of that, we got to have some new characters thrown into the mix because one of them has to be Ghostface unless we want to make one of the returning characters ghost face maybe Danny but that's gonna be really disappointing to do the boyfriend thing again I'm still rooting for my girl Sam even though I know that's probably not gonna happen fingers crossed baby hashtag Sam's the killer in scream 7 get them all together they're trapped in New York because of a blizzard or whatever and then that's when ghost face really starts coming after him not only do you get ghost face in the snow but you also get Sydney Prescott back alongside Patrick Dempsey playing Mark Kincaid which I think would be a lot of fun if everything I'm talking about in this video is confirmed I feel like this is the most likely scenario for what we get for a Scream 7, but me personally, especially after watching Saw X, which was so good, I want them to just go back to a simplistic story. I think that would just be so much better. Maybe follow like a couple of characters from the past, but mostly new people, have yourself a good murder mystery, and then just give us a brand new ghost face who kicks ass. I just want Scream 7 to be good, and I think simple and good are very synonymous in this time of film. We have a lot of movies that are very overcomplicated and overthink what they need to do in order to be successful, and more times often than not, that ends up becoming an overcomplicated mess when you try to make every fan happy. Saw X, for instance, may not have made everybody happy, but the reviews are through the roof. I got a comment from someone, for instance, who said, I wish the movie had focused more on Mark Hoffman versus Amanda. Saw X may not have made that person happy. No film can claim to appease everybody who watched it, but you can make a certain select group of the fan base happy, the majority, for instance, if you just focus on a simpler story that's a really good murder mystery, because that's why we come to Scream. You can bring Sidney Prescott back, too. You just can't bring back all of the legacy characters. Like if this movie just features Sydney, the core four, and a bunch of new characters, it could be wildly successful, especially if they're able to fool us with a brand new killer. That seemed to be everybody's complaint with the previous film, so let's fix that for Scream 7. Keeping my fingers crossed, I hope Scream 7 is a banger, but how are you guys feeling about the film at the moment? Leave me something about it in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching this brand new Scream 7 update. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content in the future. Please consider supporting me on Patreon by clicking on the link in the description below, and as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.